Paula Williams. It's John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you ladies and gentlemen out there in the aviation world sell more of your products and services. Absolutely. Or both. Or both, right? <laughs> Some people have products and services. True. So, uh, either way, whatever you're selling, you probably have a website. One would hope these days. Right. Um, actually, you know, a lot of people are trying to get by with the social media. A lot of people are, um, you know, have a website that's been kind of sitting there for 10 years or more, um, you know, other things like that. So we should talk about that. We should talk about that. <laughs> and we should talk about, you know, and this is actually one of the questions we get the most. Um, people often seek us out when they need uh, when it becomes painfully obvious that they need a website redesign, right? And sometimes they wait past that until they get a phone call. Are you guys still in business? <laughs> well, your website hasn't changed. Right, and exactly. That's actually happened to one of our clients. So. That has, right. So um, <clears throat> today we're going to talk about what to consider in a website redesign and things that have changed in the last few months or years You know that you might want to consider if you are considering getting a website redesign, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or refresh, either way. Exactly, or refresh. <clears throat> um, we've called it a, a website refresh. We've called it a website redesign. Sometimes it needs a redesign. Sometimes we just need to update the technology behind it. Right. Um, you know, so whatever words we want to <clears throat> use for this. And interestingly, there have become a lot more words used to describe a website. You know, a website, a landing page, a web brochure, an online presence. You know, there's lots of things that people call this. Um, and just like anything else that the marketing industry touches, they make up a lot of names for it. <laughs> so anyway, um, great websites um, by any other name do three things. One is get attention, inspire confidence, and inspire action and make it super easy to take that action, whatever that is, right? Of course. Okay. And the things that have changed that we're going to talk about, um, intellectual property or IP has become a big deal <laughs> uh, in recent days, weeks, months, right? Yep. Um, privacy has become a big deal in recent days, weeks, months. And years. Mm -hmm. um, update frequency uh, has become a big deal as... Technology has changed to accommodate not having programmers, uh, you know, and still being able to keep your website up to date. And the last thing that we'll talk about is retina displays. Great. Yeah, and uh, how everybody has a retina display even on their phone these days, <laughs> uh, which makes some websites look much worse than um, they did, you know, before they got yeah. the retina display. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so first of all... Um, is your website getting any attention at all? Mm -hmm. uh, is it getting enough attention to and justify... Is it getting the correct attention? <laughs> yeah, is it getting enough attention to justify its existence? And is it getting attention from people who are actually potential customers? Um, and, you know, there's a bunch of different ways that we can use uh, to make this happen. You're probably familiar with keywords and SEO and, and other technologies um, that help websites get found uh, and get attention. Uh, and that really depends on what your customers are looking for. So, you know, we've had people come to us and say, our website has great SEO because we're at the top of Google searches for our company name. And the company name. Yeah. Great. So we're number one for Acme Aviation, you know, which is a fake company that we use for a lot of different examples. We're at number one for Acme Aviation. If somebody was looking for Acme Aviation, we are the number one Google search result. And the only problem with that is they don't know the name of your company. They're searching for somebody that will do what they need. Right. So your customers aren't, probably aren't looking for Acme Aviation, which is what we call a branded keyword. Potential customers. Right. They are looking for turbine engine service or aircraft renters insurance or aircraft tires or aircraft record management or charter flights from Salt Lake City or um, any number flight of training or aircraft records management or a bonanza for sale or any number of different things. Um, so, you know, the first thing that we do when we consider how well a website is performing is, is it being found for 
your most profitable products and services? True. And if the answer is no, <laughs> which it often is, then that's one of the first places we need to start is, you know, is it being indexed by the search engines? Does it have quality content about those topics um, and those kinds of things? So um, <clears throat> that's the first thing we want to consider is, is it getting attention, right? True. Um, the second and, thing. And the right kind of attention, not just bots. <laughs> right? <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of places in the world where um, if you're getting a lot of traffic from and that's not where your business is located or where your customers are located, that's sometimes a red flag that maybe this uh, something that you've done in the past to improve your search engine optimization was not entirely on the up and up. Um, and that's something that we may need to clean up before we can actually get in and, and begin improving your situation. And that presupposes you haven't been... Uh blackballed by Google. Right, which can also happen. And sometimes there's, <clears throat> there are ways to recover from that. Sometimes it's best to rebrand. <laughs> yeah, this is a great time to do a rebrand and change our name just a little bit and start a new website. Exactly. Um, and that's happened as well. You know, <clears throat> we've had clients that just had an unrecoverable, uh, and, you know, Google is, is notorious for this, but the other search engines do it as well. Um, if they make a decision that is not in your favor, there is typically no recourse. Recourse, And it is such a large percentage of the <clears throat> traffic on the internet that it really isn't <clears throat> worth fighting. Sometimes, you know, the better course of valor is to, um, chicken is the better course of valor, right? Sometimes. Um, and we just have to find a way to get around that and live to fight another day, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All <clears throat> right. So, um, the second thing to consider in, in a website redesign is, does this inspire confidence on the part of your customers? So, John, since you are typically the um, demographic of a lot of our, our clients' customers, um, when you visit a website, what is it about that website that inspires confidence? Hmm. Or doesn't inspire confidence, I guess it might be easier <laughs> to say that There's a lot of things way. that don't inspire confidence. Okay, let's start with that. That's probably easier. But uh, too many words. Okay. Um, that's, that's never good. And then to have old graphics. Okay. That uh, look raggedy or blurry. Mm-hmm. And have... Too many choices. Okay. Those are the best or the worst. Examples? For me. <laughs> or how about having like a date of, you know, 2018 or something? Well, but that shows based on what I just said. That's true. Okay. And, I mean, you, uh, if you if those first three things don't work, I'm not even going to look for a date because I know it's too old. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for a, an attractive, updated design? Something I can easily drill down into. Something that's really simple to find answers to your questions. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Cool. So um, inspiring confidence in somebody like John is not always easy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's typically what we're doing when we're doing a website redesign is we're, we're taking your um, ideal customer and looking at the website from their point of view. What am I looking for? What are the most common tasks that I want to perform when I'm going to this website? Do I want to find a price? Do I want to find a, do I want a consultation? Do I want, do I have some typical questions, you know, that I want to have answered? It's surprising how many, I'll say companies, mm -hmm. but basically individuals will build a website all about their company and nobody cares. Yeah. I mean, that what you have to build it for what your customers want, what they hope to see, what well, if they're looking for product A or B or C, what's going to send them in the right direction? Right. We like to say your website should not be about your company or even about your product. It should be about your customer. Exactly. And the problem they're having and how you're <clears throat> going to solve it for them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And there are so many websites that start with, we are a customer service oriented. Uh, <laughs> Which means they're not, from my perspective. Right. And, uh, you know, we've been in business since 1984 and we have, we are the leading provider of services. And they, you know, it's like half a page before you can figure out what they actually do. 
Yeah, and, and it, even then, if you can figure it out, it's it's. I won't waste my time. Right. Exactly. So inspiring confidence. That's thing number two. Um, thing number three is getting people to take action. Um, now this is going to have to be a compromise between what you want them to do and what they are likely to do, right? Right. So some companies, they don't want to be bothered with phone calls. They don't want to have to respond to every little thing, but customers expect that level of service, especially for certain products and services. Yeah. I mean, if I don't see a phone number on there mm -hmm. and I have a couple of questions I can't resolve, I go to the next one. Right. And so, you know, having a prominent clickable phone number may not be what you want, you know, because you don't necessarily want your phone ringing off the wall. But if you do have it, make dang sure mm -hmm. that somebody answers it. Right. And that you're handling those calls appropriately. So whatever action you your customer takes, you want that to be very rewarding for them <laughs> very quickly, because otherwise they're going to go elsewhere pretty quickly. If it's rewarding for them, guess what? It's going to mm -hmm. be rewarding for you. Absolutely. So, you know, do you want them to <clears throat> call you? Do you want them to um, fill out a form to get a quote? Um, you know, whatever it is, whatever action it is that you want them to take, you want to make sure that it's super easy for them to do and super rewarding um, in a very short amount of time because otherwise you're one click away from the next guy who can yeah. serve them faster. If they're not rewarded, neither will you be. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, um, you know, those are the three things that we think a website should do. Get attention, inspire confidence, and uh, get people to take action, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Make it super easy and obvious what action they should take in order to solve their problem. Yep. Um, so now let's talk about some of the things that have changed or that have been become a whole lot more prominent in the last few months because of news events and other things. Um, one of them is what we call intellectual property. Yep, which okay. is all we sell. Right, which is all we sell. As a marketing company, <laughs> our entire product line is intellectual property, um, you know, that we either create for other people or that we have created for ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so it's very, very important for us to not be at the mercy of <laughs> third parties like Facebook, um, Google, Instagram, TikTok, anybody else, you know, they all have these terms of service where anything that you put on their service, um, if they disappear it, if they put ads on it, if they warp it, if they do something weird to it, you may not have total control of that. But it, if you publish things on your own website first, then you have a time stamped copy. Yeah, well, you aren't in control, which means you have no recourse to whatever they do. Exactly. It, but if you publish something on your own website, you own that real estate. Um, so you have a time-stamped copy of this um, episode or this article or this video or this whatever it is that you have total control over. Yep. And, you know, sometimes that's not practical. Like uh, with videos, you know, you may want to um, look into some of the video hosting services that are have better and worse terms of services. <laughs> we publish ours um, on Vimeo and on YouTube simply because we want to have two copies <laughs> out there in the world, but we don't want them on our own website because it, our web server isn't built for that. And we don't want them hanging up and giving people a bad experience and having us. Nope. But there are links there. Freeze, right? Do the robot. <laughs> but there are links. There are links there. Exactly. But um, so it's very important to consider what you do with your intellectual property and your website is the safest possible place to publish anything first. Mm -hmm. Right? And assuming, of course, that you're with a service that provides backups. Right, exactly. And, uh, <clears throat> of course, we do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. For the websites that we host, we, we provide backups in at least two different ways um, so that if something happens to your website, we have a cached copy and we also have a backup we can restore. So, you know, there's a couple of different things that we can do to make sure that your data is safe. Um, but that's safety of data versus what people might do to your data if they get hold of it is a whole other story. Of course. So, um, yeah, you know, intellectual property is a thing. And um, 
there's a lot of information out there about, you know, things that have happened with people's intellectual property on different social media sites. So you do want to make sure that anything that you have, you have copies of somewhere safe and you publish it to your own website first. It's really yes. the advice that we have. Of course. Okay. Um, frequency of updates. Since COVID, and I actually was listening to an article on NPR today about um, restaurants and their menus. And you're going, what the heck does this have to do <laughs> with any of this? When Okay, so a year ago, before COVID, that two, years, two ago. years ago. Okay, fine. You walk into a, a restaurant and you're handed a menu that has prices on it, right? Hmm? And these prices have probably not changed in five years because they haven't had these menus reprinted in like five years, right? right? Okay. Nowadays, people are so used to having these um, QR codes on the tables. So restaurants can now change their pricing dynamically. So, for example, the price of drinks goes up after 4 p.m. Uh, or after happy hour or whatever the situation is. So updating information has become the norm, right? Um, I'm not suggesting that you change your prices more than once a day. <laughs> In fact, I'm not suggesting that you change your prices at all. What I'm suggesting is that it is a whole lot easier to keep things up to date and people do expect that everything electronic be up to date. So an out of date website was fine two years ago. It is not fine now. Um, if you've got old people in your about us page that have not been with your company for five years, that's a problem. Uh, that's a problem. If you have services in your catalog that you don't do anymore, that's a problem. Um, if you don't have products and services that you actually offer on your website, that's a problem. So, etc. Yeah. So you should be able to update your website either um, because you're partnering with a marketing company that will do it for you in a um, convenient and not terribly expensive way. Timely. Right. Or you should be able to do those updates yourself. And we've got clients that do both. Um, you know, we've got clients that want the keys to their website. And, you know, they've got people who are fairly tech savvy. Um, we've got clients that want a form so that they can update certain portions of their website. And there are apps and forms and things that allow you to do that. Well, what's interesting is those that update their own, mm -hmm. they always give us the keys because, <laughs> <laughs> because they... Uh, and frequently run across things that uh, just doesn't make sense on what's going on. That's and they true. ask us to get involved. Right, exactly. And I, I'm totally into collaboration, you know, working with people so that they do as much as they're comfortable with. And then we take over from there. Mm -hmm. um, because you don't need to be paying us for stuff that you could perfectly well do. Of course. Um, and, or you don't need to be waking us up at 4 o'clock in the morning because you had an idea. <laughs> But uh, either way, you know, there are ways that we can collaborate uh, in ways that are comfortable for all of us, right? Of course. Okay. Of course. Okay. But we do have 24-hour coverage with people yeah. that do that. Exactly. So. Right. But we're not going to get creative with you at 4 o'clock in the morning. No. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So when we're talking about privacy on your website... It is just about impossible to keep up with all the changes in the laws and rules that have to do with customer privacy. And, and the various data. countries that's going to be looking at you. Right. And lots of different countries have their own rules. Lots of different states in the United States have their own rules. Uh, and it happens so frequently that even though we are in the business of marketing and marketing is what we do 24-7, it's too much for even us to keep up with. Um, so we use a service called Termageddon uh, on the websites that we build. Uh, we highly recommend it to, to anybody. Um, yeah, if you build it, you should do these, you use these guys as well. Exactly. And what it does is it uh, creates a privacy policy page for you that is updated constantly with the, the latest wherever it is. Exactly. And some of these things you actually need to interact with. Um, it's not entirely automated uh, because you do need to know uh, if you need to run your different your business differently or if you need to change the way that you do things or you need to change the way your forms work. Sometimes that happens. We can take care of that for you if we're your marketing company. Um, if not, Termageddon will tell you, you can't use this type of form anymore. <laughs> you need to go find an alternative. 
um, or whatever it is. And they keep you on the straight and narrow and prevent any legal issues with privacy uh, on your website. Exactly. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about today as far as things that have changed recently that may um, impact your decision about whether or not to do a redesign is the advent of retina displays. And retina displays come in all sizes. Come in all sizes. They can be this big and still have an amazing picture, right? Assuming that you've programmed it for retina display. <laughs> well, exactly. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I get really, really, really good photos and videos on this little thing that I carry around with me all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a tablet. You have a tablet. Mm -hmm. um, almost everybody has retina displays uh, in some form, you know, whether that's the monster monitor on your desk or whether that is a little screen that you're carrying around. You still expect a much higher quality of photograph, a much higher quality of video than anybody did two years ago. High quality, read that to mean high resolution. High resolution, um, you know, video should be in 4K, um, or 5K. <laughs> right, you want to go as high as you possibly can so it'll have a longer shelf life. Yeah, But uh, because the servers like uh, YouTube, YouTube and others, they serve up whatever your device handles. Yeah, they'll serve up a lower resolution for people to have a lower resolution browser or screen. And, and we are now to the point where I think we do 8K mostly, right? We have done 8K, yeah. Um, but like John and I, you know, we like old movies. But sometimes we can't stand to watch them because we have this big, beautiful TV. And you watch some of these old movies on a big beautiful tv and it just makes your eyes run you know it's just doesn't look right because the screen can handle so much more so much higher resolution than if they remaster them properly mm -hmm. then they're good right otherwise they need to put on an analog screen to get it <laughs> right we almost need to buy an old tv from somewhere so we can watch old movies without uh bawling our eyes out with uh you know because of the uh the the clarity that just is that you expect and that we've come to that we've become accustomed to yes that just isn't there so um when people look at your website if they see something that is a low resolution uh you know two years ago kind of an image and you know that could be um the photographs on your site that could be the design of the site itself that could be the text um everything on your site should be served uh, at a level that people are expecting from a high-definition retina device. It could be you signed up and built one of those 1495 websites. Right. And their resolution just doesn't go that high. Right. And, uh, or, you know, if you use top-of-the-line tools or a very expensive agency two or three years ago, it's still not going to be at the resolution that it would be if you uh, remastered your website uh, in this day and age. Maybe that's a term we should start using, remaster your website. Well, <laughs> in, in the case of what we do, we use the same hardware and software that Hollywood does to create movies. Right. So, Cut Pro. And, and it's, it's a whole new ball game to learn, but once you've got it, Mm -hmm. uh, what you can produce is quite amazing right. to I me. Mean. <laughs> and it takes a whole lot of bandwidth to process those kinds of movies. Believe me, we're going to do that with this movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it does make a, a big difference in how people perceive your company if their first impression of you is retina-ready or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course. All right. Um, last thing I'm going to talk about, we actually are running a special this summer we have a new team of copywriters that I'm really, really proud of. They are really getting their stuff together. Good. And uh, so if you do uh, decide to do a website redesign for us or with us in the next, let's say, till the end of August, we will provide three hours of copywriting and read with that, that website. For all you oldsters who don't realize what copywriting is, it's content writing. Right, exactly. Content for the website. Yeah. Um, you do have to have really compelling writing on your website. As you know, John mentioned, if you've got too many words, 
uh, that is not going to serve the purpose. So you have to have a really good design and you have to have concise, powerful writing, compelling And, um, and before you go thinking that you can replace copywriters with AI, <laughs> the AI <laughs> providers mm -hmm. tell you you need a good copywriter <laughs> to provide a good input so it can have a good output. Right. So... And to answer the question that I'm sure everybody's thinking, our copywriters do use those AI tools to get the results that they do, uh, but they also refine it as human beings. So yes. uh, the AI tools are great, but they're just not there yet. So. And then uh, it has to get past us. Mm -hmm. After it's all said and done, I do the final edit. Mm -hmm. So you can use that copywriting for rewriting your homepage in a way that uh, is optimized for the keywords that you're after. Um, rewriting your About Us page is a really common um, project that does wonders for your website mm -hmm. and does wonders for your, your company image as well. Um, product descriptions, happy customer um, testimonials, interviews, things like that. Those are things that you can use our copywriters for to bring your website to the next level, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, and as we mentioned, everybody has a different level of comfort uh, and a different level of interaction with their website. You know, some people want it all done for them. They never want to touch it. They never want to... You know, the guy that says, I'm not technical. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and they want it all done for them. We got you covered. Um, we'll take care of everything for you. Uh, if you're somewhere in the hybrid range and you want to be participating, updating your website, uh, you know, certain things on it, you want to be highly involved in the writing and design of your website, um, we got you covered there. If you want it to be fairly self-service and do this with templates and, you know, have us coach you through the process of building your website, we can do that too. So wherever you fall on the pyramid, that affects the amount of time and the amount of money <laughs> that you're going to have to put into the project. Um, but, you know, of course, we'd love to sit down with you and do a consultation and say, you know, you've got a pretty good website. Here are the things we should keep. Here are the things we need to burn to the ground right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And here's how we proceed going forward. And uh, we have a 31-point checklist that we use for that process to go through what you've got, keep what's great, and uh, massage the rest. Yeah, exactly. Do what we need to do to get the rest to the next level. All right. So we talked about the three things that your website should do. Uh, it should get attention, inspire confidence, and inspire action. Um, if it is not doing, if there's any one of those things that is not doing well, then it needs to be helped. Then it probably needs some help. And uh, there are Four other things that we talked about uh, that have changed in the last couple of years. One is intellectual property, privacy, update frequency, and retina displays, right? Yep. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Stay safe and happy. See you later.